And the final round coverage from the Oakwood Country Club in the Coal Valley of Illinois with the Hardee's Golf Classic. Well, the celebrations continue, though not as big a celebration in the Penske pit. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Emerson Fittipaldi just had been on the phone to uh, his countrymen down in Brazil. And Emerson, uh, is it difficult to explain how the championship hopes that were so bright a week ago now that fire has been put out and Mr. Mansell gets to celebrate. Is this tough for you? Well, it's very tough, Gary. Uh, look, in the beginning of the race, I did a great start. I was able to take the lead. The car was really well balanced, and then I start losing balance, and the car went to lose. I think the track has changed, and I'm disappointed. Nigel Durov, a beautiful race. I mean, he was very quick, very consistent the whole race. And uh, ourselves, myself and Paul, were trying to trim the car for the conditions, and we're not able to be consistent. Had there been a yellow flag, and amazingly there was not, would that have made any difference? Could you have caught Nigel? No, I don't think so. I think just the way that uh, both cars were balanced was not as quick as Nigel's car. Nigel was driving beautiful race, and he was very quick, and I don't think there was any way to catch. You have to catch him next year. Are you surprised, Emerson, at how quickly he was able to adapt and, and win, I guess, the last five oval races this year? I'm very surprised, Gary, because it's, uh, coming from Formula One, it's very tough to drive on a short oval, and uh, he was amazing quick on, on the oval. I mean, that's... Uh, I would like to congratulate. He did a beautiful job. Well, we congratulate you on making it a great championship run throughout this season. We'll see you in a couple of weeks at Laguna. Thank you, Gary. All right, let's go to Jan Bikas. His teammate, Gary, is, of course, Paul Tracy driving the other Marlboro car. Now, Paul, you now know you're third, but when you first got here, a bit of a dispute with Robbie Gordon. Well, I knew I was third. I think Robbie thought that I was uh, way back, and he... And I caught him with about six laps to go and got around him, and I don't think he realized that I was in third, so he put, didn't put up too much of a fight, which was kind of nice. But then you had the, uh, you got to send him back to the showers, as they say. Yeah, I had to send him back to the, back to his shop, as I said. But uh, you know, it was a good day for us. We, uh, we were quick right off the bat with the Marlboro car, and then we uh, ran into a loose condition, and uh, you know, pretty much from there, we couldn't get rid of it. We just kind of hung on to the car all day and just hung in there. But you have more miles here than any other driver. Why did that track go loose? Well, I think everybody was loose. I, you know, I think I wasn't as bad as most people, but uh, you know, looking at some of the other guys, they were really loose. But you know, it was just a, this weekend the track changes with weather, and we didn't get a chance to really get it set up the way we would like it. But you know, all in all, we got the, the whole weekend done in one day, and you know, it was a testament to Cart and their organization skills. And uh, I think it was a great weekend. Got a new champion, and uh, good weekend for everybody. Paul Tracy, another one of those drivers couldn't quite find that balance. Paul. Boy, what a difference a year makes on Paul Tracy. Look how confident he appears. Emerson Fittipaldi, they talk it over now. What could they have done? But now it is too late. Nigel Mansell has taken the IndyCar Championship. Official ceremony is just about ready to begin to congratulate and honor Nigel Mansell as the champion. But let's talk to some of the others in this fight. Fourth place, Robbie Gordon, Gary. Hey, Robbie, you really worked hard. You end up fourth in this one. Now, Tracy got by there in the late stages. Did you know he was coming up and that would be a fight for position? Yeah, basically I got held up a little bit from Stefan and um, I was battling with Stefan and I couldn't get by him you know, without taking big chances. And I didn't know if Tracy would catch me or not, and all of a sudden we both got held up, and he made up like six seconds in one lap. But, you know, that's racing. Tracy did a good job. Um, our car ran pretty good all day long, and we'll just wait till Laguna. Surprising that you get one of these events, you go 200 laps without a yellow flag. There's no chance to get a breather. You're in that traffic all the time. This is a tremendous workout, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, you know, it's... It, was, um, it wasn't too bad, though. You know, it was 200 laps. I wasn't tired at the end. Um, too bad it wasn't 400. Maybe we could go farther and get higher up on the podium. Now, any word from how the boss man, A.J. Foyt's doing? Because we know he wasn't here today. He had surgery this past week. Well, I hope he's doing okay, and I wish him well. And I also wish um, a friend of mine, Kendall family, a lot of luck. And, um, you know, they're great buddies of mine. His father passed away not too long ago, and I just want to say we loved you. And I'm sure that they appreciate that very much. In this learning curve that you're in this season, how much do you think Robbie Gordon, the IndyCar driver, has improved since back uh, early in March at Australia? I think we're, we're really consistent right now. We just moved into eighth in points, and I'm, I'm ecstatic. You know, we, um, we have one more race left this year, and we'll just try to get in the top ten for points. And how about the plans for 1994? Any more you can share with us? Just want to win races. <laughs> Wherever it may be. Paul? 
Well, the order is standing. It's unofficial at the moment. Point, look at him celebrate down there in the winner's circle. Nigel Mansell takes the win, followed by Scott Goodyear, Paul Tracy. Then you just talked with Robbie Gordon. Emerson Fittipaldi, he needed 30, finishes in fifth place. And then Bobby Rahal. Looking down the bottom half of the top 12, Stefania Johansson, Ari Leyendijk, Raul Boisel. Eddie Cheever finally gives the uh, Kingsport car a good ride here. And then Tail Fabi and Mark Smith with a fine result. 13th through 18th, Mario Andretti, not his best day, but David Coudray with a good result. Scott Brayton, Brian Till, Robbie Buell, Olivier Criard. 23 cars actually finish the competition. Willie Ribs, Danny Sullivan, Hiro Mashushta, Ross Bentley, and Marco Greco. All of those running at the finish. Mauricio Guzelmin, and then Al Unser Jr. and Buddy Lazier falling out of the run here at Nazareth. A run that saw Nigel Mansell take both the win of the race and his fifth of the season his fourth win on an oval and scoring 191 points that's enough to take the championship of the indy cars there is now still one more race to go this season paul tracy sits back in third place as raul boisel drops back into fourth place and bobby rahal now sits in fifth now the final stop of the ppg indycar world series will be seen live on ESPN2, Sunday, October 3rd at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 p.m. Pacific from Laguna Seca Road Course at Monterey, California. The first live American event on the new ESPN2. And then same day coverage of the championship race that evening at 9 o'clock Eastern time here on ESPN. The race has been run, but there are still presentations to be made, both for the win of the race and for the championship. We'll be back to cover those. Yes. Here in Nazareth at the Bosch Park Plug Grand Prix, they're getting ready for the formal presentation of the PPG Cup to Nigel Mansell as he takes his first championship. And an interesting fact, because Formula One is not yet resolved, here stands Mansell holding two championships at the same time. And the great thing and the enjoyable thing about watching Nigel Mansell is he wins these things with speed and style. He doesn't wait for races to unfold and begin to come back to him or fall into his lap. He just goes out and pursues it so aggressively. That's why he is one of the most popular racing drivers around the world with the fans, whether he's in F1 or now in IndyCars. And look there, you've got a glimpse of the giant press contingent. Those are all media people around him there. Look at them, all their cameras, the photographers. Those, that's actually located in between the warm-up lane and the pit road, so that requires special credential to get in that particular area. It gives some idea of what Mansell has done in terms of drawing the international press, and now with these broadcasts going to 100 nations around the world, it has truly become a remarkable global network. But now, a champion. Let's go to Gary. Our customers, it's my pleasure to present you with the PPG Cup. Congratulations. Well, thank you, and it uh, makes me very, very proud indeed, and I can thank you on behalf of all the drivers uh, for your involvement in this uh, World Series, and I, I just can't thank enough people, so just thanks everybody, and all the people who should come from Europe here today, it's a very special day for me, uh, as you're all aware, and I'm just glad everyone shared in it. Thank you very much. Great season. Right. Tom Craig making the presentation to Nigel Mansell. That's a heavy one, Nigel, be careful. He got ready to hoist it for some official photos here, being congratulated by Craig. And I'll tell you what, this is just, uh, what a moment this has to be for Nigel Mansell, the veteran driver who's been through so many such ceremonies in his career, but you could clearly see all of the emotion that was there earlier today. And I think it's now just really starting to begin to take a toll on the man who went 200 miles today in flawless fashion and without benefit of a yellow flag or anything else. And look at him enjoy this moment, Paul. A man who early in his racing career broke his neck and was told he would never drive again now stands in the winner's circle at Pennsylvania International Raceway holding the Formula One world title and the PPG Cup at the same time. By the way, that is the little PPG Cup. That's, that's the replica. That's not even the big one. Let's go down to Jan Bikas. We're standing by with the other half of this championship, his wife, Roseanne. Must be a very special day for you as well. well it feels wonderful and relief with a capital R. So. You have done a lot of racing series. How does this feel as compared to Formula oh, One? It just feels equally as good and probably because it's a back-to-back -back championship and never been done before, it probably feels even that bit better. And it's just been a wonderful year, super team and 
hello to everybody. <laughs> now, what do you feel about the people in this in this whole series? Because it does have a different feel than in Europe. There's a totally different atmosphere, and it's just everybody's very warm. The competitiveness is there, but the camaraderie is, is wonderful. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that family will have a great deal to celebrate. Kids are in school, though. They couldn't come for this race. I wondered whether or not they were going to bring the whole family up here. Nigel Mansell now standing for all of the official photographs here. Tremendous press corps assembled as Nigel Mansell. Plenty of folks over from Europe who have come here to watch him take the IndyCar Championship. Remarkable day here at Nazareth under beautiful blue skies overhead and definitely blue skies for Nigel Mansell. Today's coverage of the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix has been brought to you by Valvoli. People who know use Valvoli. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. We're back at Nazareth. We'll have bonus coverage of the Hardy's Classic Golf coming up at 3 o'clock. But Nigel Mansell continues to celebrate, and he should celebrate. It's a magnificent victory, Derek. It really is, and there will be lots of what-ifs in the Penske pit because what if Fittipaldi's championship drive had not been derailed a little bit towards the center of the season, at the back of the, the end, the middle of the season? But Paul Newman also alluded to next year. Can you imagine what we have to look forward to now with Michael Andretti going head to head with Nigel Mansell? And maybe a dozen or so Formula One drivers here at Nazareth looking for a possible future here. Gary Gerald, final thoughts. I tell you, it is a bright future for this series. Of course, we've got a race at Laguna, but I look back over what Mansell's done, and if you'd have told me back in March that he would win at New Hampshire, he'd win at Milwaukee, that he'd win on the mile here at Nazareth, I would have said, you're crazy. I didn't think there was any possible way a man could adapt that quickly. Uh, my hat's off to Nigel Mansell. I'm thoroughly impressed. Jan Bikas, you've been in the cockpit of these cars as well. It's a remarkable achievement. It's a remarkable achievement, not only for Nigel Mansell, but for he and his engineer. They chose the perfect setup today. You had to start with push. They did that. It paid off for them today. So Nigel Mansell continues to celebrate here and go through the formalities of all of the photographs that will be circulated worldwide. Fort Cosworth and Lola have taken the championship, taken the victory here. A very happy Englishman. Congratulations to Nigel Mansell, who wins the race here at Nazareth, the Bosch Park Plug Grand Prix, and the PPG IndyCar World Championship. The Union Jack is predominant here. Five now equals number one. Mansell is the champion. So long from Nazareth.